Welcome back. So starting out the second half of the week, I printed out some templates there to help me align these handles for the door uh, armrests and marked out what needed to be cut out for them to sort of live in and I had Devin uh, cut those out for me and unfortunately I messed up one of them when I was aligning it so you had to do that sort of again but you'll see that and then we drilled a hole in through there to carry it through the other side and then there's hardware for that that you'll see later on. And uh, back in the cabin, so um, I've got the carpet fit in there as you saw last time. And here I've got the seat, the front seat mounts in there and just sort of cutting the carpet around them to fit. And uh, just setting the carpet up so, you know, once everything's in there, we can just basically quickly put it in there and don't have to worry about trying to fit it, um, you know, once everything's already there. So now that that's done, it's time for me to move on finally to uh, finishing off the wiring and uh, getting the avionics installed. So the first step, or well, the first thing I wanted to do was uh, put these connectors on the ends of the side sticks. So these are 15 pin connectors and I think I'm using about 9 pins or something like that. And um, these allow us to do things like have the push to talk button and you know the frequency switch and the autopilot disconnect and there's a couple of other different features uh, that we have on there because the sticks uh, the side sticks that we have have quite a few buttons on there I can't think of what the other ones are right now um, so anyway uh, just getting those all wired up and uh, then the next step is going to be to move on to uh, installing the avionics in the cabin so as you've seen if you've been following along I did all the wiring for the avionics over a year ago now and it's all sitting on the desk there in the office so the the goal is going to be just to basically clean it up as much as I can but probably after putting it in uh, to the cabin because uh, a lot of the runs that I did in there were you know best guess scenario for how um, you know where things are going to sit and based upon you know having done done it all in the CAD but you know how it is in the CAD things match up sometimes and other things other times uh, things don't so you got to make some changes along the fly uh, on the fly but anyway um, got these guys done and uh, as you'll see here in a second and I've made it so these connectors can be passed back through when when they're installed there so there you can see there's one of them and then the other one there and, and side sticks so they're all ready to go in the cabin now and the next step was to create this one uh, cable with connectors on either end that runs up through the conduit that or the conduits that I had placed into the A pillar on the right hand side of the aircraft and this is basically a 25 pin connector so this is all the wiring that goes to the overhead switch panel and also power for the overhead lights and even I've got um, a run in there to allow us to put like a speaker or even a stereo speaker up the back wall of the uh, cabin and then you can see uh, Devin's just showing me this um, that door handle thing he's actually just been putting a chamfer on the edge there and uh, making that all look all nice and pretty um, anyway so this um, wiring there going up the A pillar that basically provides all the wiring for all the switches and, you know on the switches there we have the avionics master and we have the starter for the engine we have the fuel pump switch and we have the uh, pedo heat and the taxi and landing lights and and um, the other um, switch for the other fuel pump and a couple of other things as well so pretty important that, that all works right so what I had to do was basically put uh, this 25 pin connector on one end and then um, run the wires um, down through the conduits and then once I had them through the other side um, put the same or the male female connector on the other end and then the um, the switch panel that you can see sitting there that already has a connector on it that's going to um, plug into the one that, that I'm working on right now and uh, down in the um, in the panel there where it comes out the bottom of the conduits there's another matching connector and that's what this basically is just kind of like an extension cord is what I'm creating there and I just have to make sure that I get all the, um, the wires covered so I basically just wired every pin except for one um, in there so I've got room for expansion later on if we add some more switches overhead as well so there's um, the connector wired up there on three different cables 
running through there oh, and a ground as well so basically four different cables and so that one there is going to have to go on the other end once I run it through so that's how that mates up there and that'll be in the overhead and there's all the switches that you guys have seen before if you've been following closely okay so now I'm uh, basically fishing or well, not even fishing just basically threading these uh, cables through because I have three different little conduits there they're only small um, I think they're the largest one is three-eighths of an inch and then the one next to that five sixteenths or something like that or maybe quarter so I've just got one in each of these and then the one with the uh, ground wire there's it goes with the other heavier one um, and that's basically going in the larger conduit and I had a bit of a trouble a bit of trouble getting that one to go in so ultimately I had to uh, switch up my game and feed through a bit of welding wire through that one and then actually um, pull that one through so it was a little bit of a, a challenge to get it done but uh, in the end it didn't take more than about 15 minutes to get uh, all those threaded through and as you can see on the end there there's the connector that I was putting on and so that lives up there in that little roof cavity where the switches um, all mount up and uh, as you'll see here in a second um, that's all running down that A pillar there sort of on the left and the top of the of the screen there and it all comes out there just right by where the panel is you'll see that here in a second so um, yeah it's actually fun doing this I actually enjoy uh, I like doing electrical stuff so I'm finally doing something that's uh, really kind of you know up my alley and uh, that I enjoy doing so uh, yeah kind of fun now we're getting close to the end of the project and being able to finish off all these things just makes it sort of uh, all more rewarding so there's the two ends of the, the 10 uh, wire ones that are pulling through and then the other one I've got the that's a three wire a heavy three wire except the ground wire didn't come with it it got stuck somewhere along the way there just was uh, getting too tight in there so anyway as I said I had to pull that one back through and then uh, put some welding wire up through there and then basically um, you know tape it and join it to the end of that wire and then fish it all the way through like you normally do um, so anyway I was trying there to try and get the end of that ground wire out and it just wouldn't come out so had to give up um, but uh, it didn't as I said didn't take more than about 15 minutes to get that done so I wasn't too worried about wasting any time on that I was kind of just enjoying the process and the challenge of, of trying to get it uh, to go through. <laughs> so uh, meanwhile, um, here's those uh, aileron, sorry, elevator rods that uh, Devin was making up the other day. And he's uh, painted those now. See this one's got the black paint and the other one was still on the primer. So those ones are uh, pretty much done and ready to go in the four plane now. And uh, back in the cabin again, so um, here I've got all my wires through and I'm putting um, the same thing, putting the matching connector on the other end of those th three different wires, the you know the 25 pin there so it just again just using these crimp on pins um, that, that we use which are actually really quick so I don't mind uh, working with those because it doesn't take that long to create you know a really good uh, connection you don't have to worry about soldering or anything like that so um, yeah that's pretty much how all the connectors have been done for the whole ship and that's pretty much how you do all your regular wiring on an aircraft I guess so just you know stripping off the end of the wire with the wire strippers and just putting a, a pin on there and then just crimping it into place and uh, 25 to go and uh, then you put the the connector on the end so there's the one in the ceiling there and uh, you can see there's the conduits where it was going through and so that's going to have the switch panel hooked up to that and then down the bottom there's everything that came out the other end and with a connector on there so just as I said kind of just like an extension cord for uh, all the wires running up there to the overhead switch panel and here's that uh, door handle so you can see Devin's done a nice job and just put a little chamfer on that thing he's also sort of polished it up a little bit and there's a, a nice long bolt that goes through there and allows that to pivot in place and that's going to be the one that actually actuates the 
the door lock mechanism. Um, I did have that other one already on the door and that's going to remain but this one sort of sits outside of the the door trim panel that's at, at the upholsterers right now. So this will sort of clean it up and this, this armrest is going to get upholstered as well. And are you tired of me saying back in the cabin yet? Well, still got a long ways to go. Um, so there's the uh, switch panel now just connected there and I also hooked up the um, connectors there for the lights and now I've got the switch panel there just just held in with uh, four of the the little bolts there I'll be pulling it out again um, do a final fitment once I'm no we don't have to add any more switches or anything like that last minute so I think that looks alright and uh, pretty much all your main switches up there for everything and uh, Jeff's busy uh, getting things sorted out with the intake tray so he's just put some FR4 on the front ends there um, so we can put some uh, some little fasteners there for where that actually bolts up to uh, the front area of that and uh, meanwhile here is uh, one of the upper skins there for the elevator it's got it back in the mold and just adding some extra layups in there because of that now we got that single actuator needed to beef up that area where that's going to mount to and it's just as easy to put it in the mold and put the layups on and vacuum it back down again and uh, here you can see Devin's filled in that mistake where I had him cut the wrong place um, because I marked it out wrong but anyway just basically filled that in with some micro so that's almost ready to go off to the upholsterer now and you can see Devin also got the new hangers there or the, the newly modified hangers bolted on at least three of them um, still got to put the last outboard one on but in order to do that we actually have to um, cut away a little bit of the um, tip of the spar there to fit it in um, so that's coming up and you can see they don't look so bad now actually because they've been shortened up um, you know an inch and a good inch and a half so not quite so long and um, back in the cabin now so finishing off now I've got the um, the pedals back in now and hooked up I was working on uh, hooking up the brakes um, the brake lines for the last time um, but here I've actually got the linkages hooked up now for the rudder as you can see that's connected to that little bell crank there so you can uh, push on those uh, rudders now and that bell crank will move um, back and forth so there's the main um, through hole there that goes for the rudders so when you push on that everything moves nicely and that's all connected now all the way down to the where the rudders are now that's moving the bell cranks right out there on the wingtips through the cables and stuff that we have so that's another of the flight controls um, pretty much done so I'm pretty happy about that so the next thing is just to finish off um, getting the brake lines all uh, fitted up for the last time so those rudder pedals aren't coming out now um, that's a final fitment and the same with um, you know the brake lines here you can see now I've got got them all connected with uh, the washers and everything on those and all tightened up so I still have to sort of uh, tie those down so they don't sort of flop around a little bit but uh, that's the last time they're um, coming out so they're basically in for good now which is nice so I'm just you know, really enjoying closing out a bunch of things so here uh, what Devin's doing is just um, painting the outboard tips of the front seat mounts because they had a little bit of resin kind of showing there where they've been laid up in the mold and it kind of looked a little weird so he's just painting those in a matte black finish and they're all glossy right now because they're wet but just a matte black finish because you do see those from the outside of the aircraft just under the seats and I didn't want to paint the whole thing because you know you can see the carbon fiber on the front it looks fairly decent um, underneath the seat kind of thing uh, so anyway you'll see those later on and then uh, back in the cabin so now I'm starting to put the avionics in there you can see I've got the the basically the stack in there and the vertical power system and the backup battery there just all on the the uh, little flat sheet that I had uh, done a long 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 time ago and the next thing to do is put the big spaghetti wiring harness mess in there that I had created and uh, get that all uh, sort of sorted out and there you can see I've just kind of thrown it in there <laughs> and it's a mess but you know um i kind of knew this was going to be how it was going to happen i haven't done this before and um you know i wasn't sure exactly the best method of doing it. I, I knew i did want to do it outside of the aircraft to start with so that worked out 
But anyway, you'll see in a little bit. I've got things getting organised on that. And uh, Jeff's working on uh, getting the cowling all sorted out there with the intake scoop and making sure everything's fit now that the strakes are all bonded on and everything's all um, set in place and the wings have the right uh, incidence angle and stuff. And back in the lunchroom, Devon's working on uh, putting the seat rails on this uh, second set of seats. And these are the seats for the front. So um, he's got those uh, mounted up there at the end of the day on Thursday. And now we're on to Friday morning and uh, continuing on the seat. So Devon switched over to the rear seats and you can see he's basically drilling a holes there in the center part of the rear seat mounts there to put in these hooks that the seat belts connect to. And the outboard ones already had these little tabs that we did a while ago. And there's the overkill seat belts that we have. And uh, there's the front seats there now. And he's got those mounted to um, the seat mounts there. So they need to have the same treatment now and get the hooks uh, drawn in there for the, um, for the seat belts there, for the lap side of your seat belt, basically. And it uh, won't be long and those will be ready to go in the cabin. And Jeff's been feverishly working on uh, getting the cowling all fit. He's drilled all the holes where the fasteners are going to be. And he's, in this case, just put Clicos there. Um, got them all nicely spaced out. So, and the cowling's all fitting really well now. Lower cowling uh, still needs a little bit more work. And we've had to do an adjustment because when we bonded the firewall on, um, when Dan and I bonded that firewall on in the A-frame, we didn't pay enough attention. And it's actually sitting a little bit low. So Jeff's had to make, you know, some adjustments to fix that, which is unfortunate and slow us down a little bit, but, you know, stuff like that happens. And uh, back in the cabin for the final time on this video, you can see I've got the power on. Um, got the avionics in there and just basically plugged everything up. And you can see I've made some um, effort there to get the wiring a bit more tidied up. Still going to, you know, clump it together more in the runs the way I had it in the CAD and the way I had it out on the desk. Uh, but overall, it seems like everything is working as planned there, and uh, which is a good little desk check. Things still need to be uh, tested, and other things haven't been like completely hooked up. But so you've got one of the lights on there. Um, the second light came on for a little while, but then the battery was so low, um, there wasn't enough power to run both. So it just basically shut one of them down, I guess. Uh, anyway, so uh, that's pretty exciting. A nice big milestone there. And uh, next week, I'll be working hard on... Uh, getting that all sorted out and um, get the uh, the whole instrument panel closed out hopefully um, maybe there's a good chance by the end of the week that I'll have it all closed out and be able to sort of move to the back of the cabin there um, get a couple more wires done there for the fuel tank sensors and then uh, uh, back into the engine come up and there's still a few things to do so that's uh, super exciting uh, anyway that's our update for the this week and uh, join us again on tuesday or wednesday whenever you watch and see what we get up to next week so thanks again for watching